Hello, everyone. It's great to see you all as always. I'm Demi Mohammed, the program assistant at the, Natural, the National Museum of Asian Art. We thank you for joining us today for our art-based meditation session brought to you by the National Museum of Asian Art. Today's meditation will be led by Aparna as we focus on a beautiful painting titled Young Prince that is from the mid 17th century, 16th century in Iran. This work is related to last week's focus on the Safavid textiles as the coat that the young person wears represents a Safavid figural texture. Again, we thank you for joining us and I'll pass it to Aparna to get us started. Thank you so much, Demi. Namaste, everybody. Good afternoon. Happy Friday to all of you. How are you doing today? I'm so, so thankful that you could take this time to be with us and join us in this art-based meditation practice this afternoon. Um, and uh, I think I think when Demi was saying, you know, she said natural uh, instead of national. And I think that's a very um, happy accident because our painting today includes a lot of natural motifs or motifs from, the, from around us in nature, particularly so appropriate for this time because, you know, spring has just started here in D.C., all those trees that were just sort of stretching out their bare branches are now beginning to be draped in these soft blooms, uh, especially, you know, flowering plums and so on and so forth. So uh, th this, this painting, I feel, is, uh, is in, in a way, it kind of mirrors our presence right now, um, especially if you're practicing today, sitting near a window, you'll see why I'm saying that. So without much ado, let me go ahead and uh, and share with you a picture, and then we will be placing links in the chat. So if you wish to click on that and just engage with the artwork on your own, you can do all of that. So quite a small painting compared to some other works so far that we may have seen in the last few weeks. It's just about, I think, um, 13 by nine inches. So you can see how um, tiny and precious this would be. And this, is uh, made of opaque watercolor and gold on um, paper. And it's a painting from the mid 16th century Iran. And it has been signed here by the artist Mohammad Harabi. Those are some of the factual information pieces that you will also find in the link that Demi has just placed in the chat. And as soon as we look at this painting, we can see how this is so similar to our presence at this time of the year. You know, we find the prince, the young prince seated here uh, at what seems like a big window. And you know, we see that he's sitting somewhat lost in thought. And this paper, which is also like the backdrop of this painting where the window has been placed a little asymmetrically like in a little to the paintings uh, right it's like being surrounded by spring and taking the time to sit and meditate or contemplate reflect on something so this artwork uh, let's allow this artwork to inspire us to go inwards, to practice some moments of mindfulness. And then from there on, we will go into a closer look at um, the painting itself, and we will practice different techniques uh, along the way. So if you need a moment to adjust your device screens, if you need to adjust your audio settings so you can see the painting and hear me clearly, please do that. Our practice will be uh, ideally done in a seated position. So if you can sit upright, maybe relax your back against a pillow. Do all of that. And then feel free to close your eyes or you may lower your gaze somewhat like our young prince. and then slow down any movements of the body. 
you can eventually transition from movement to stillness. Bringing in a quality of physical silence to your presence where you are, just as you are. In these rather busy times, you might notice that your mind tries to wander away to something else that may not be a part of this moment. And if that's happening, just know that you can always come back anytime you realize your attention has wandered away. You can come back to your body, noticing where the body touches anything that is supporting it. Could be your feet touching the floor. Could be the seat resting on the couch or chair. It could be your back against a pillow or the backrest. Let your body Gently land onto these supports first. And then with every passing moment, try to release the weight of your body. You're allowing the body now to anchor. Anchor to support. groundedness towards the earth. Like you're rooting into being here now. As we have arrived into this practice, let's take a few deep Breathing in through the nose. You could breathe out through the mouth. Like you're breathing in into the here. Breathing out into the now. Now let the breath be, let it happen on its own. Let's move our spot attention as if it were a spotlight, moving it from feet to crown. As I mentioned, each part of the body, simply bring your attention to that part. You may observe any sensations or the lack of sensations therein. And then we'll notice the shape of that body space, which is offering or holding space for these sensations to exist. So if you're ready, gently place your attention to your right and left feet. Take your time to notice the sensations in your toes, sensations in the soles of your feet, the 
tops of the feet. The inner arches. The outer edges of your feet. And then bring your awareness to the shape of your feet. Can we notice this shape as the field of consciousness where these sensations could express themselves, manifest themselves, and be experienced And then can we know the feet's presence through these sensations in the space containing them? So we don't need to move or see our feet to know that they are there. And gently shift your attention to model the same art of attention into your lower legs, all of that space between your knees and their ankles. And the knees and the thighs. The hips and the seat. The abdomen and the lower back. The chest and the upper back. The shoulders. Now the entire torso, shoulders to pelvic floor. the upper arms, elbows and forearms. The hands. The neck. The entire head. And now can we integrate this awareness of the whole body, all of its sensations, and the shape of the body containing those sensations? Can we experience our presence through this awareness of sensations and the space within?
And as our attention intimately inhabits within this body, can we perceive this embodiment to be full of ease and relaxation? Whatever the body is experiencing, it is still there. There is no urge to grip onto it. Let it come, let it go. No need to hold. Let everything just be like a flow. And from this place of easeful presence, can we witness our mind? But imagine your mind to be like a sky, where each thought is a cloud. And if there are thoughts that seem difficult, thoughts that you're willing to process safely all by yourself. And just think of any overwhelming thought as one cloud in the sky, which will never be able to define the entire sky. So allow this thought to exist. And allow ourselves to listen to what all this thought is trying to tell us. Then choosing to be a witness to that thought, you might find a space wherein lies our power over that thought. And if still the thought is too overwhelming, you can always choose to come out of the mind space and attune to your breath, seeking refuge in the rhythm of your inhales and exhales. And when we have nurtured all these tools to safely hold space for ourselves as a witness, May we open our eyes and we'll zoom in. First focus on the expression of the young prince. And we notice where he's holding a small cup and the position of that cup and its relationship to his gaze. You might be able to infer how his gaze is not actually on that cup, which suggests that he is holding that cup absent mindedly, lost in thought. You wonder what he might be thinking about. Maybe we could look around a little bit more to make some guesses as to what he might be reflecting upon. And here we'll focus on his robe, this really rich figural textile that he's wearing. And as we zoom in, we notice scenes that are not particularly peaceful. For example, here we see a man holding another person by a, by a rope. 
It could be that this person is a warrior who is taking prisoner. And we see such motifs repeated all along his robe. And we find people who are not just dressed in men's clothes, but also here we find a figure that we can identify as a woman with a rope very disturbingly around her neck. As we see these scenes, which are somewhat violent, what do we notice happening in our body's experience? What is that visceral feeling it invokes? And if seeing this triggers something too strong, we always have a choice. Take a few breaths, look away, seek refuge in our breathing. And we have a choice to shift our attention from all of this to the more soothing floral motifs, the intertwined creepers all around the prince. And whenever we find the space, time, and perhaps the courage to sit with this difficult imagery here. We could witness what is it? What is that narrative that is coming up for us as we see these images? And then we could ask ourselves, how can I hold a loving, kind, non-judgmental space for myself here? With all the loving kindness we can, is it possible for us not get attached or identified, and also not deny or create aversion for what is. How may we find that equanimity? There be a calm focus, even amidst chaos. And when we have certain insights in response to that question of how we may find our inner calm amidst external and perhaps also internal chaos, we could choose to focus on some resolved, unresolved challenge that we're ready to think about that we can safely hold space for at the moment all by ourselves. Even better if that problem is, it has multiple aspects to it. Something really challenging. And if it helps you to focus better, you can also bring your fingers, interlace your fingers together.
keeping the spine upright, the interlaced fingers resting on the legs. So think about all the facets of a challenge perhaps you're working to resolve. Can we understand this challenge from a place of equanimity? And as we understand the challenge in this way, can we also use the same approach of equanimity, of witnessing our own strengths and shortcomings? Can we choose to nourish what is already a strength so we can work on whatever is a shortcoming that needs to be worked upon to fulfill a certain purpose, resolve this challenge? We can do all that we can with whatever we have. Let the universe do the rest. And from time to time, we could keep reviewing ourselves, our efforts, and the nature of the challenge to dynamically flow and move forward from where we are. May this quality of equanimity help us flow through all the challenges, the sense of ease, without the burden of doership. May that sense of flowing through life Help us see all the treasures that we have already been bestowed with, no matter how small. It does help us cultivate gratitude. May that gratitude lead us to harmony. And in that harmony, may we all experience a sense of oneness that has chosen to manifest itself in diverse forms. May we all bow to the light within ourselves. May we all bow to the light that binds us all into oneness, one big consciousness. And may we bow to the teachings of yoga and the teachers who bestowed these teachings upon us for helping us see and experience this oneness. Breathing in, we're here now. Breathing out, we're together. Breathing in, we're here now. Breathing out, we're together. We're here now, we're together.
May all beings be well. May all beings be disease free. May all beings see the light and auspiciousness of life. May there be no suffering. Peace be to all. Peace be to all. Peace be to all. Thank you so much for choosing to share your presence and practice with us today. I hope this beautiful work of art from the Islamic world was um, a very, very useful inspiration to journey inwards and sit with what is present for us, what is unfolding for us as we meditated. And hopefully we're able to carry all of these insights into the rest of this day, into the weekend, and until we meet again and practice meditation together again.